Alrighty guys, welcome back. Build uh, part four of the Defiant 28 build log. Um, one thing I was concerned about looking through the groups and stuff, um, some folks are ended up ending up with extra extra sparring. Um, the diagram shows a spar pattern on the top and the bottom of the wing. Uh, we covered that in the previous build videos, um, sparring the top and the bottom. Um, thinking back, um, I had left them about a half inch short on the wing tips. It wouldn't be a big deal if I had gone about an inch and a half or even two inches short of the wing tip. And then these bottom rear spars would have extended a little bit longer. Um, as it is, it's not a big deal. There's not a tremendous amount of bending load out here at the tip for the spars to support. Um, the majority of the bending loads are in towards the root of the wing. Um, so having this, this rear outer spar a little bit shorter is not a big deal here. Uh, but just keep that in mind. All right. So I think in this video, what we're going to do is um, we're going to cut back the rear of the blunt section. We're going to taper the outer wing panels and we're going to cut and shape the elevons. And depending on how long this one goes, we may uh, attach them. I'll show you my, my bulletproof method for attaching elevons. Um, all right, let's get started. So nothing... Um, Nothing complicated here. I'm just gonna cut this section out with a knife. Right. Um, note too, like uh, in the previous video, I had screwed up and cut the wrong location for the spars. And uh, I don't know if you can see that, but you can barely see the line there. And all I did was just squirt some stuff in there and it was fine. Some uh, E6000. And it just glued right shut, but you never even know it was there. Just want to be sure you're keeping keeping the knife pretty perpendicular to the back. I'm just freehand cutting this. Um, just make sure it's nice and perpendicular because if it's not, you'll impart some some thrust angle into the motor mount when you attach that later on. Yeah, and that's that's straight enough for my kind of work. <laughs> Might just trim it up just a little bit here. There we go. A little bit of, see that? And just a little bit of flash. Light cut there. Not, nothing much. Okay. And I'm just kind of eyeballing the motor mount uh, bearing surface here uh, area here just to make sure that it's nice and flat and kind of perpendicular to the bottom of the wing here. All right, good enough. <clears throat> um, so now we want to get the the taper straightened out here. Now I use um, so uh, it's the motor that I'm putting on there, and I'm running Cyclone fifty fifty props. So you, you want to have five inch clearance. You can see on the. Uh, prototype that I built here um, there's very little clearance like maybe an eighth of an inch but uh, that's fine it makes it louder <laughs> um, so you just want to make sure you got five inches of clearance there so looking at it you know the prop is going to sit back somewhere around here all right um, so what I think I'm going to do is just cut out about a mark off an inch and just cut a wedge out right there so let's do that Okay. 
Okay. Yeah. And that looks reasonably close to the prototype I built. Let's, let's see. <laughs> wow. It's almost an exact match. Yep. Identical. Perfect. Okay. Now what we want to do is we want to match... Let's uh, trim our elevons up, and I'll show you a couple different methods. I mean, this this is nothing groundbreaking here. I'll just show you two different ways to do it, uh, depending on what kind of tools you got. But we want to let me tape this on, and I'll show you what the uh, what we want to copy. And you guys have built these things before; you know exactly what you're doing. But somebody who hasn't, I'll go through it all. All right. So again, that, that green tape. We're just gonna. Take these on in place for right now. Okay. And do the other side. When you tape them on, you want that nice and flush on the top edge there. Okay. Now, nice and tight to the trailing edge of the wing. So what we're going to do is just get the ruler out again. These chunks, I tend to save a little box of these chunks. These are good if you uh, ever have a crash or something and you lose some pieces or you need to make, um, you know, fill in holes or whatever in your wing. Um, these are great to have on hand for that. You can cut out nice square pieces and cut out matching pieces and just goop them in or E6000 or Gorilla Glue, whatever you need to. So, hold on to these. Right. So, I'm just going to duplicate this angle here. Okay. And now, I didn't. I'm not a perfect builder. <laughs> I never claimed to be. So, I didn't put this out far enough, because at the wingtip, we want to be able to, we, out the wingtip here, we want to be able to cut enough off to make clearance, you see, see the clearance um, for the elevon movements there. Um, that's a, an exaggerated amount of clearance, but works fine. Uh, yeah. Right. So out here at the wingtip, I just kind of eh, eyeball it. I mean, like an eighth of an inch or something like that. Not much. You don't need a lot of angle there to clear the winglet. The other side. So we're going to make these initial cuts, um, and then we'll do the inboard cuts. Uh, usually on wings. Uh, Alright. So let's pull these off. Alright, so I use a saw like this. I'll do the first one with this. been building stuff for a long time see like a big one there I bet got going Got a lot of balsa wood related tools and whatnot so but I also know that not everybody has that stuff so and the right cut line there okay. now the other way is just using your your knife again you just want to make sure it's nice and sharp. Balsa wood will tear. It doesn't cut very well. You don't have a sharp knife. Okay, so... You just want to take a bunch of little cuts. Okay, don't worry about it if it's not perfect. We'll get a sander out and fix it. You don't want to cut right on a line. You just want to cut just off it. Alright. 
and we'll come up to that line with the sander. Okay, a little tear out, that's all right. Okay, so work. You don't need to do this if you don't want to. You just slap it together. It's kind of something I do. All right, so now this is the inboard edge here. Um, this is the right elevon. This is the left elevon. I know this is the right because I got the, the marking there, but I usually just come back and um, right here on this one, I just put an R or left right at, right at the root just so that I know later on. Right, left, right. Okay, now, and put it up towards the leading edge too because we're gonna be trimming this here in a minute. Okay. So my prototype, what I did was I, um, we're gonna be cutting off this corner here. So, what I did was I measured up a half inch along that, straight along that line for the mark. And it was four inches out. And a mark. Right. Same thing on this one. Right. Uh, about a half inch. And four inches. Okay. So, this is saw. This is where the saw kind of comes in handy a little bit. Couple of light passes is all, all it takes. All right. Now we're gonna give it a little sanding just to make it look a little bit nicer. But the top edge, so this is the left side, this top edge, this top corner right here, leave that nice and crisp and sharp. All right. You'll see why in the next step when we use apply goop hinges. And just a, old sanding sponge I got here. I'm just gonna lightly sand it. I'll try to keep the trailing edges crisp too. But like all that fuzz and stuff there, that's gonna come off. Some people will come in and seal the wood with some sanding sealer or stuff like that for for the painting. I don't really get. I don't really care. <laughs> I just I hinge them, throw them on there, throw paint on there, whatever. It's fine. Okay, we are ready to hinge, and we'll do that in the next video. Thanks for watching.